Hi, I'm the Goblin, and welcome to my grotto, where I paint and showcase tabletop miniatures. This is the third part to a four-part series wherein I attempt to paint 20 miniatures, culminating with me painting my 222nd miniature on 2-22-2022, aka my attempt at the so-named Tuesday Challenge. So be sure to check out the previous parts if you've missed them. Also, remember, if you enjoy this content, leaving a like, subscribing, and or commenting really helps the channel out, and it really truly makes my day seeing your support. Speaking of, you can also support me and follow me on Ko-fi, the link to which will be in the description. But now, on with the show. I wasn't there for the Bones 4 Kickstarter, but I've since learned that these dinosaur folk all originated from there. I picked these up after the fact and slowly painted them all sporadically over the years, and would have completed the set except for one mini, the Armorback Barbarian, which just stumped me for the longest time. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to paint it, and I generally lacked the inspiration to actually paint it. But with this opportunity to challenge myself through this series, it was as good a time as any to knock another mini out of my pile of shame. I went with a red, brown, bony, sepia color scheme for this one, as I've really enjoyed painting with layers of red lately. And there wasn't a red representative in the Dino Folk lineup up to this point. As with nearly all of the minis from this set, I had based their weapons with a really dark metallic paint mixed with just a drop of black. This was to mimic the look of obsidian. I figured this would be both a great bit of continuity to tie all these minis together and a means of relating back to that ancient primordial nature of all of these dinosaur people. Plus, it just looks a lot better than, like, a standard stone tool would be. I didn't end up washing any of the skin on this character, which I think worked out perfectly fine. Not every mini needs to be washed from head to toe anyways, but in this particular case, my wash, Agrax Earthshade, also left this very shiny, wet look on the parts I did wash. It doesn't normally do this, so I think I maybe just added too much wash, or something else was still on the brush that gave it some kind of really glossy element. Eh, it is what it is, but I still think it looks great, and I'm really happy to finally, finally, clear out this spot and put paint to mini and get this thing complete. Ah, well, you know I had to get some goblins in here at some point, and here they are. It's a twofer. This is the Wild Spires, two goblins, and a trench coat. There's really not a whole lot of detail to this figure, but then that's a challenge in of itself. When you have large, mostly flat surfaces, dry brushing, washing, etc. just isn't as effective as there's very little in the way of places for any of these techniques to catch or pull. So, we have to be very careful at how we go about painting such things. That said, this was a fun experiment in just slapping things together to see what worked. Getting the right color for the coat was tricky and it took many different tries with many different paints. The goblins, on the other hand, were pretty easy to paint. I just made them green, and that's it, really. I highlighted them later with a lighter green. They're green, they're goblins, and they're little. It's not really too much to them. This trench coat, though, was a long process and was not easy, despite of how easy it might look. Once I had found a color for it that I actually liked, I began washing it heavily with Agrax or Shade. And once that had dried, I was left with this very dirty, worn piece of clothing, which I embraced. After a little bit of highlighting and some light mud splattering at the feet, this mini was complete. As silly as the concept is, I actually think this would be a fairly creepy looking mini to put on the table. At least until you know what it is. Trotting on in is yet another model from Reaper Miniatures, listed as 
the dwarf mounted battle mage. Yes, this old wizard seems to be riding a little pony, which actually ended up giving me a ton of grief. You know, it was almost, uh, well, maimed or uh, seriously injured by a pony about this size. Uh, nearly kicked me in the head. How I ended up where the pony could kick me in the head? Well, let's just say I was a little kid and I was riding the pony and it fell off. And uh, I did not fall forward. <laughs> I fell backwards. And that is not a great place to be behind a pony, horse, or any other hoofed animal. But anyway, I looked up a lot of references for ponies and tried my best to match the red or brown examples. But some of the paints I had just really didn't match. I did a lot of wet blending and paint mixing to try and get closer, but, but this will be something I wouldn't be happy with until I got to the very end. I was a little unsure on what I wanted to do with the wizard, but I knew I wanted him to have a gray beard, and seeing as the pony was more of a red tone, I thought it seemed only right that the wizard would be blue tone. The initial blue paint that I used from Army Painter, specifically the one, specifically a little rubber bottle from the Nolzer's paint line, uh, it, it had terrible coverage. It felt like I was just pushing around dirty mop water or something. It just, it didn't really do anything, and the places where it did settle just left this gross, shiny blue. So even though I liked the color, I scrapped that paint and decided to use some alternatives from Reaper Miniatures and Citadel. Mixing some paint together, I finally got it right and began base coating and then subsequently highlighting. As with most models, they don't really come together until you're near the end, and this one was no exception. Once everything had had a wash and the highlighting had begun, it really started to come into its own, and I was able to go back and touch up areas that I had neglected previously. This mini had been a little bit of an eyesore for a long time, just sort of sitting on a shelf I have hung up on the wall and amongst a lot of other painted and unpainted minis, and it's good to finally get it covered. It's really a nice mini, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Honestly, this mini doesn't look half bad with just the primers, but this isn't a challenge to see how many minis I can half-heartedly prime by the 22nd, so it's on to the painting for this one. I'd picked this Reaper model up a long time ago alongside a bunch of other skeletal minis. I didn't waste any time painting those, but this one I guess I just didn't feel the motivation to cover. Now that I'm doing this challenge though, it's a great opportunity to fill in some of these gaps. Speaking of which, there's a lot on this figure, so the washes will be doing most of the work. But I'll still have to manage the portion control and get the right bases underneath. I took some inspiration from the artwork for Skyrim with this miniature. I eventually decided I wanted the clothing scraps to be green, but getting the right shade was tricky. By the end though, I was happy with what I got, but I don't know that it's perfect, and that's okay. Yeah, there's really not a ton to say about this mini. It's a dragon skeleton. It looks really cool, but it's not necessarily the most complex paint job there is. Alrighty, last figure. Over the course of me painting it, I think it began to look like a very specific person to me, an actor, and more specifically a character they play. Let me know who I might be thinking of and when that moment of recognition happened for me in the comments down below. This Reaper Mini has gone through some official name changes, but regardless I see this character as a bit of an inquisitor or witch hunter type individual. Initially I wanted their outfit to be some kind of black, but something about it just didn't fit the vibe I was going for and I had already done something similar in a previous video. Instead, I went with this Citadel Castellan Green. This is it's an air paint on the pot, but paint is paint, and I don't even have an airbrush anyways, so... Once the green was on there, I decided similarly toned shades of red would be a great counter with the clothes underneath. 
I also gave this guy a little black beard and lots of little gold highlights. I'm gonna be sad when I run out of this three cream gold that came with my Nolzer's pigment scent. It's honestly the best gold I have in terms of coverage and looks. Another paint I'll be sad when I run out of it, Reaper's Shadowed Steel. I use this on all of the general steel metallic bits, including the little bits on the gun and the sword. Yeah, I'm just really pleased with this mini. I can't unsee who this looks like to me, but honestly that just makes it better in my opinion. I think the look and vibe of this character could fit well into a number of different settings, from your more grim dark to your lighter affairs. I would definitely use this as a player character one day, and most certainly would be playing him up as the character that he reminds me of. And with that, the penultimate set of figures is complete. Join me next time as I attempt to race against time and finish this challenge. With what little time I have left, I'll tell you, it's going to be close. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the content. Check out my Kofi for everything I've got going on. Have a good one, and let's go paint some minis. Take care.